All right, joined now by Joe Andruzzi, three-time Super Bowl champ, and he heads, of course, the Joe Andruzzi Foundation. You guys have a special night with the Paw Sox coming up on Saturday. What can you tell us about it? Looking forward to a great night coming out with some cancer patients. Mm -hmm. So people are purchasing the tickets through the foundation. Proceeds will be coming back to the foundation to help pay it forward in so many ways. We help with uh, mortgage, rent, and utilities with uh, you know, many patients with financial distress. Sure. Cancer is uh, not getting any easier, and so we're there to step in to help pay for your home end bills so you can care for your loved ones. And that night, we're just going to come out and have a grand old time and yeah. uh, have some fun out there. And you know you won't be seeing me swinging a bat or anything, but uh, <laughs> are you throwing the first pitch? Huh? I'll throw, throw the first? Pitch. I'll throw a ball out there, but right. uh, you know it should be some fun. To, you know, bring out some patients yeah. and uh, families and enjoy a great night out. And uh, of course, uh, Saturday night we're gonna hopefully cheer on uh, the Poor Sox. Yeah. And after the great win, we'll have uh, some fireworks. There you go. Yeah, always a big night at McCoy. <laughs> are you foundation about ten years now, or? You're going uh, yeah, 10 years strong. and So how do you help. continue to develop different ways and events? You guys are so active in the community to keep it fresh and innovative. You know, we try and uh, grab different ideas from different things that we do personally. Mm -hmm. And we uh, put our heads together as a staff. We have uh, 13 people on the staff now. Started 10 years ago, my wife and I out of our home. And uh, we've grown uh, pretty big. and. You know, a lot of people that have supported us over the years who you know come with different ideas also so we have a lot of volunteers that to help give back we have uh, you know a lot of patients that mm -hmm. want to give back too so we have uh, you know whether it's uh, a poor Sox night whether it's our gala or our golf outing we have a third party golf outing coming up here in Rhode Island okay. at Forster Country Club on Monday oh, nice. so looking forward to a great night the uh, you know Bobby and Amanda uh, Farsa uh, great people who have given back to us many of times. Uh, we also have uh, many people running the Falmouth Road, Road Race. Two of our top um, money getters are patient recipients. Mm. So here, here they are receiving funds from us, sure. getting back on their feet, and now want to pay it forward in other ways. So they're able to do that and help us pay it forward in so many ways. So it's a it's a great cause. It's a, we love doing it. We also have our Boston Marathon team, which mm -hmm. which is uh, has been going great for the last uh, eight years now. Awesome. Yeah, continue to make your footprint in the uh, community there. All right, what do you make about the Patriots this offseason? Some people aren't as high as them as recent years. You have all the t sports talk stuff about Brady and Belichick, no answer to the Malcolm Butlers. <laughs> you worried about any of this? You've been in that locker room. The outside noise? Been there, done that. It's outside noise. Uh, it's, you know, sorry to say it, it's the media. Sure. And, uh, you know, Bill doesn't give you anything to talk about. Right. And it's, you know, also Tom's trying not to uh, give you anything and the other players aren't. Um, they're going to talk about, you know, themselves personally and sure. how the team is uh, preparing. But overall, you still got number 12 out yeah. there. And... You know, the NFC East, I mean, the AFC East, I think it's still theirs to win. Right, you absolutely. Know, the, these, the other teams that are uh, in the East here, the, they haven't really uh, brought themselves to the level that the Patriots are at, or sure. have been at. So the, it's the old saying, the Patriot way, but you, know, you walk in that building and uh, Bill, Tom, and all these guys, they have these guys ready. They yeah. have that aroma there. I, you know, I've been there. They, you know, the work ethic is you know working twice as hard and sure. you know the saying do your job and you know it runs from the top right down to the last man on the totem pole now when you were with brady in the early part of his career could you have ever imagined he'd be still playing at 41 he'd be this <laughs> super duper star uh and eventually have five rings and potentially go down as the greatest ever uh yeah, when he took when he, in no uh, one in no one when he took over for bledsoe at that point well I remember getting here in 2000, and he was that uh, little slappy in the corner of the locker room, <laughs> fourth, fourth, fourth string quarterback. Nobody knew who he was. And then when he came in that huddle with, uh, when Drew went down, and that big smile on his face, that uh, you know he was calm, cool, collective, and you yeah. knew that he can control his himself. Yeah. And he was, you know, he was preparing himself that whole off season mm -hmm. from his rookie year to the second year. He was working out trying to get bigger, faster, stronger, trying to study film. He studied film from past guys, Montana, yep. Elway, all these guys 
to learn different tangibles that can help his game. And he, he truly did that. And now he's to a level where, you know, everybody's studying him now. And right. uh, he's, he's done it for so many years. And he understands that offense like the back of his hand. And, right. you know, I think, you know, he's pretty much calling the offense out there because there's probably 10 plays going in at one time. And, you know, having the guys rally around you, it's a, yeah. it's a team effort. And he's the first one to tell you that he can't do it without the old line, the tight ends, sure. the running backs, receivers. He can't do it without his team. And, you know, he's a great teammate, but really is a, a great guy who prepares himself to the top of his level. Yeah. Is it true that he was a better beer drinker than the rest of you old linemen? Faster? <laughs> Uh, and I'm pretty sure that he's not drinking anymore unless it's <laughs> avocado juice or something. But, uh, yeah, back in the day when he was younger, uh, he definitely can uh, chug faster than some, uh, yeah, some guys. Fast on the chugger team. is the reputation. Yes, the fast chugger. I think there's That's some funny. pictures and some videos <laughs> probably still out there, uh, but I uh, haven't seen him lately. <laughs> um, you played for Bill Belichick in these dog days of training camp. And he's riding you, and it's 95 degrees. And you were in the days of two days. Now <laughs> yeah, they just say, do one. I wish I played nowadays yeah. in this heat, and one. And you only have one practice. That's great. How much are you appreciating the coaching, but at the same time, like, man, he's riding us so hard. You know it's to make you better, but still, as a player, how do you absorb the coaching? Yeah, at those times, uh, you know, most players, it's uh, – you know, the miserable time of year and uh, misery <laughs> loves company. So it was, you know, that laughter. And, yeah. you know, with the Joe Andrews Foundation, our slogan is upbeat cancer and yeah. staying up being positive through those toughest of times is always the hardest. Mm -hmm. And it kind of trans in, transisted in, you know, sure. the dog days of summer. And during camp, it was dog days. And the old line, as the old line, we always had fun. You know, we had we had a joke around. We had a we had a smile. We we yeah. we uh, planned jokes on guys, and you know whether it's me, Copen, Light, yeah. uh, you know Neil or Hochstein. I mean these guys uh, that I played with and are still very yeah. good friends with. Yeah. That you know you got to have fun with it. And whether it was one year, I remember <laughs> us growing mustaches, <laughs> and Matt Light coming up with a song. Uh, <laughs> You know, and uh, having... He had like a Fu Manchu, right? Didn't well, he, he had the Fu Manchu. We all had yeah. mustaches. Some guys couldn't grow them. I don't all know. Right. There, there. there you go. <laughs> I won't mention names, but... Uh, he Offensive came up. linemen love facial hair. I feel oh, like yeah. that's it's the thing. Just, it's that grunt. It's yeah. that uh, lunch pail kind of sure. attitude. You know, you're in the trenches there, so you got to get going and, you know, showing uh, some facial hair and, you know, some of that, that drool that comes out of your mouth during the game <laughs> when you're trying to <laughs> catch your breath and... Uh, you know, because a lot of times, uh, you know, it's one play after another, and it's, you know, you got to uh, be able to get out there and, yep. you know, play four quarters strong. Yep. Well, there you have it. Good memories of Joe Andrews. And, of course, head over to the McCoy Stadium Saturday for the Joe Andrews Foundation Paw Sox Night. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you.